So guys, welcome to this video series. We're going to talk about the syllabus of a chemical engineer. So essentially, what are the courses, subjects, lab experiments and final projects and whatever thing you can think of that you will be studying in order to get your chemical engineering degree. So I get, uh, I do this because I'm actually ask a lot a lot of questions from you in the Facebook page or even via email many of you are young students from high school or any other college and they ask me you ask me if chemical engineering is hard what do they study what do they work so plenty of stuff regarding what do a chemical engineer does makes what does he work and also where which master degrees he will be able to get and so on. So I decided to make this video playlist in YouTube so you can check out what is the syllabus. So I'm going to explain you a little bit on what do we need to study in order to become, or as many students will say, survive chemical engineering. So this is brought to you by me, Chemical Engineering Guy. If you want to check out more cool content, go through my website. And yeah, I did a little bit on research, informal analysis. Actually, I didn't even set up a research or a methodology. I just went up online and searched on Google, literally wrote the words chemical engineering and syllabus or courses, subjects, and so on. So I did get a lot of results. Google is almighty. And yeah, essentially I got more of these but I, I couldn't fit them in one single slide I got let's say about 100% I would say 60% was USA University so you can check this here University of Texas at Austin MIT University of Florida University of Virginia which I didn't know it existed MSU Carnegie Mellon then about 15% was either UK or Australia or South Africa, which I think is well, also, I will say Canada, all the Commonwealth countries. And the other, I don't know, it's like 25%. It's really all around the world. So for example, India also is my home or Alma Mater University, Tech de Monterrey from Mexico. I also checked out in Chile, Argentina, some Egyptian universities, also some in Saudi Arabia, which they had a lot. It makes sense because they have a lot of oil. Also, I checked plenty of German universities, which I will say they are very, very, let's say they have a lot of universities regarding chemical engineering and also French ones, so I did, uh, yeah, in general I tried to go and check out for the whole world, or at least the world that typically goes into chemical engineering. And yeah, I was wondering on if we actually study the same around the world. So we have, this is, sorry, I'm not that good drawing, so this is Europe, Africa, Middle East, and maybe this is India and Thailand and all those countries, Japan, beautiful Korea, Australia. So I did check out if we actually check or study the same things. So in the USA, or at least this was my guess, in the USA they see a lot of economics and maybe new technologies. In Europe I would say they have more about on the environment. In Asia, sorry, Asia here, China maybe, or Japan, Japan I will say they have technology, I will say India, you have a lot of computer related uh, process engineering or maybe simulations, modeling, uh, software modeling and so. Australia, I didn't even have a clue, I don't know what they are good for, sorry for you guys, but I don't know if there's even petroleum there, I think there is. And for Africa and Middle East, well, I thought about petroleum, petrochemicals and stuff. So the good thing is that even though we are in a huge global con uh, continent or world, I could divide into four regions or you could say blocks, topics, the chemical engineer bachelor. When I speak about bachelor, I mean about 
when you convert from high school to engineer. So the good thing is that we are actually studying more or less the same things like unit operations and theoretical basis are similar. We eventually end up doing some projects on plant design and so on. So that's good. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is that actually I became I, three years. So I checked out how long do you need to study in order to convert into an engineer. So the average was about three years to four years. With of course its exceptions, but the mainly I will say 80% is about something around four years and the 20% something around three years. So yeah, of course, maybe there are some places you need five years and maybe two years. But in general, what I saw, the number of semester courses or trimesters and so on was about three to four years. So I'm going to, since we have 80% of this, I'm going to pay more attention into the four years. And I got these blocks right here. So you can see there are four blocks. The first block, which is roughly translated to the first year of your, uh, let's say, training. Then the second year, third year, and final year. Of course, if you have a three-year program, well, you will have the same blocks, just differently set. So recall that one year has two semesters. I will say winter semester and summer semester or spring and autumn. I don't know how you, you divide them. So, well, the first thing I wanted to show you is that we all start with general engineering. We study a, a little bit on math, a little bit on sciences, a little bit in introduction to our engineering fields, environment, and so on. And of course, maths. Then eventually we go and check out for the theoretical basis, what we're starting to study a little bit more on the thermodynamics, on transport phenomena, mass balances, and energy balances. But still, we don't have the ability to create unit operations, which is in the third year. In third year, you will see a lot of, let's say, heat transfer, momentum transport, fluid dynamics, uh, mass separation, uh, mass transfer, and so on. And you will be able to do these beautiful buildings right here, like a distillation or cracking unit, coker, uh, reformer, reactors, and so on. Eventually, once you actually know a little bit on the basis and about the unit operations, you eventually create your chemical plant to produce a product which you will want to sell probably. So this is one that, what I wanted to show you guys. I also read a lot on the requisites. So for instance, all the countries I checked, all the universities, they will, let's say, if you want to study plant design, you cannot just go there and sign up. You need to study unit operations, which are essentially heat, mass, momentum and reactors and in order to know about let's say reactors you will need to have a little bit of insight on the chemistry of reactions kinetic models organic chemistry maybe and so on and in order to know a little bit on this you will need to know the general stuff like math models chemistry and so on so that's a good thing all the places or universities I checked, they have prerequisites, which is, I think, very important. And what I'm going to do in the next or following videos is essentially just break up all these blocks. They are the same topics I showed you before. But right now it's, let's say, into assignments. So what I want to cover the most is this part right here, which is the actual chemical engineer stuff. This is general engineering, what every engineer should know, or at least. So for instance, algebra, calculus, differential equations. You should be sure that if you're talking with an energy engineer, you should like assume that he knows about equations and how to solve them and so on. A little bit on physics, biology, and the environment. This right here is pretty special for the chemical engineer. So you will expect that one engineer knows the basics about engineering. So for instance, a chemical equation and all that. But of course, we go a, a little bit deeper than normal engineers. But that's another thing. And computer solving, industrial engineering, and so on. And then I will think this is the actual first block where you will see if chemical engineering is for you. 
So maybe you love maths, you love sciences, you love computers, but then you go to the mass balance course, and your courses, thermodynamics, and then you say, fuck this, I don't, I'm not into that. I'm more about the computer software, or maybe you are more into mechanical engineering, You're, you don't like that much, maybe balancing a process, you prefer the materials, or maybe you say, fuck this, I'm going for civil engineering, I prefer buildings, because yes, as I tell you before, I'm good at algebra, calculus, differential equations, a little bit of sciences. I do like chemistry, but more about materials used in the construction. So I think the first, let's say this one right here, is just to say that you like engineering. So if you're in the first year, which is this one right here, general engineering, and you don't like it, well, this may be because, oh, fuck, I don't like math, so I'm into art. Or maybe you say, I don't like physics, so i rather become a doctor. Or you say, I'm not into computers, so I will go and maybe, I don't know, study literature. So the first year is, you are about engineering. The second year, which is the theoretical basis, I will say, you are into process engineering, maybe mechanical engineering, process engineering, petroleum engineering, chemical engineering, anything related to processes. And eventually, I would say that in the third year right here, this is literally all about process engineering. So I think if you make it up to here, you will probably stick to it because you, this is pretty similar to this right here. This is the knowledge and this is the application. So if you like the knowledge, probably you will like the application. And finally, last year, which is the fourth year, and hopefully you don't back up and say, oh fuck, I'm in my last year and I, want to become a art student so if you do not you survive up to the third year and you're up in your final year well you will see a little bit more on computer aided chemical engineering a little bit on plant design and operation more importantly economics behind that and yeah, essentially that's what covers a syllabus in chemical engineering so if you really want to know a little bit more on what do we see or study in heat transfer or what is transfer phenomena and what do we study or how do we approach the plant design stick into this playlist because I'm going to break up this uh, presentation into many many videos covering each one of them so hopefully you like it guys please add the comments and click thumbs up if you really like this video and see you in the next Topics.